여러분 안녕하십니까 루킹포맘 투게더의 최인성입니다 루킹포맘 투게더는 한국의 보건복지부사나 아동권리보장원과 미주중앙일보가 함께 제작하고 있습니다 88년 서울올림픽 다 아시죠? 올림픽을 3년 앞둔 1985년 미국 오하이오로 입양된 김현지라는 아이가 있었습니다 현지 양은 같은 해 1월 충청북도 충주 성심병원에서 태어났는데요 당시 25살로 알려진 친엄마는 아이를 바로 포기했고 현지는 해외 입양이 결정됐습니다. 지금은 딸과 아들을 둔 올해 37살의 샤샤 그리핀 김현지 씨는 이제 조국의 어머니를 찾겠다고 합니다. 오늘 루킹포맘 투게드는 오하이오에 살고 있는 샤샤 그리핀 김현지 씨를 줌으로 초대합니다. 안녕하세요 현지 씨 반갑습니다. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> so tell us who you are to our viewers, please. I'm Sasha Griffin. I'm an archivist and a librarian. Um, I'm a mother of two and I'm in Ohio. Okay, Chungcheongbukdo Chungju, Songshin Pyeongwon. I know you speak a bit of Korean. In 1985, if I'm not mistaken, what was the situation around when you were born, when you decided to be adopted overseas, to where, going through which agencies, if you, as far as you remember, Shasha? As far as I know, um, I was born and my birth mother left the hospital shortly after I was um, delivered. Um, I was relinquished to children's services by the hospital director of the clinic and I stayed in a foster home in Tejan for a little bit um, for maybe two weeks and then I stayed in a foster home in Seoul under Holt's um, foster program. Okay I have a, this wonderful picture right after you're born and I clearly see your name there. Do you know or do we know or have we found that who actually named you Kim Hyunji? I don't know. Um, I was told that my birth mother was 25 years old and that her name, last name was Kim. Um, but that's all I know. I see. I have also a beautiful picture when you arrived here and you were very young back then, this wonderful smile on your face, going to school every day. I love it. I also have you in Hamburg, as you remember. <laughs> um, tell us about your family here, adoptive family, siblings, mom and dad. Who are they, please? Um, so my mom is a first generation Norwegian American. Um, my grandpa was born in Norway and immigrated. Um, my mom and my dad have a, uh, had a daughter before me. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Sarahka and she's five years older than me. I see. We ask this K, K Korean American friends the uh, same question again and again, but this time, Shasha, what really motivated you to start this journey, to start looking for your uh, birth moms or birth parents or families over there in Korea? What happened? Um, when I became a mother, I think that's when a lot of my interests really started into trying to connect with my birth mother because the, of all of the feelings I had um, towards my firstborn and understanding a new perspective of what it was like to, to be a parent. Um, and so I began being interested in trying to learn more then. However, mm. I didn't get very far and it wasn't until COVID started I that see. I had a lot of time on my hands. And that's when I really started to, to spend more time. And then um, my adoptive father passed away and I sort of had this feeling of urgency that um, I don't want my birth family to pass away mm. um, before I have a chance to try to find them. I see. Now, I know you uh, contacted the NCRC and also Holt uh, for further uh, search and hopefully get a round of more paperwork and, and numbers and names. How far have you gone? What have you got in your hands now? 
I don't have that much. And I think it's just because there wasn't much that was created um, as far as paperwork goes. I have my original Holt file and um, that sort of has my, um, my first initial doctor examination and the general statements that I had mentioned earlier about how my birth mother had disappeared and after I was delivered and then they um, had put me into the service care of Holt Children's Services. And I have some paperwork about um, my immigration to the United States from my adoptive agency here in America and some um, files that I had gotten from the U.S. Um, Citizenship and Immigration Services that also confirmed a lot of the same paperwork, but um, also included some of the family background of my adoptive family that they had done, like the HOPE study and, and the research to, to make sure that they were a good family. Uh, I know you have a, a children and you have a beautiful family there too. Are they uh, aware of what you've been going through and are they all the way supportive? They are. Um, my children are very, um, they're very proud to be Korean American. Really? Which is, they are. They're so happy about it. My daughter has given um, little mini presentations to her class about salar and all kinds of little chusak. And mm. it was really exciting for her to share that with her um, friends at school, which was very different because when I was growing up, there weren't a lot of Korean Americans at all That's where That's in my city. And so I, I wasn't ever um, excited to share about it because I didn't know about it. But I'm really happy that both of my children are very excited um, to learn about Korea. They're very excited that I'm going to be going to Korea and they wanted to come with me. Mm, but okay. I told them maybe next time. <laughs> okay, great, great. Uh, I'm not sure if you have t taken uh, any samples of DNA so far, or are you? If not, are you are you planning to do so? Uh, where is it going? What do you expect out of it? So I have done um, a couple of different DNA collection services. Um, I've done the commercial ones like 23andMe and Ancestry, um, but I've also um, I traveled um, to the consulate in Chicago and I was part of the program that was able to collect my DNA there, and then they sent it via diplomatic pouch to Korea. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I was only the second person that they had had at Chicago mm -hmm. at the consulate there. Um, so it was all kind of new for them as well. For me, as far as my expectations go, um, I'm not I'm not fully expecting to have a, an immediate you know, close relation match. I think for me, what I'm realistically hoping for is maybe a first cousin or even a sibling or a half sibling that I could find. I um, but I know that the um, those commercial DNA products aren't as popular in Korea. So I'm really hoping that perhaps through the um, and CRC collection process that maybe that would be able to have more of an effect than than 23andMe. And oh yeah, let's let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, back in '85, uh, your birth mom was supposed to be 25. That means now is somewhere between late 50 or early 60, I guess. Yeah, I um, I kind of wondered what if that was the Korean age or if that was the international age, I wasn't totally sure um, what 25 meant, but I I do imagine that probably they would be, um, she would be about that age. I see. Are you okay, Shasha? You, you sound a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so let's say all the DNA tests and your search, all the assistance from the NCRC or even Holt, and even you are lucky enough, I should say lucky enough to be able to sit down with your mom somewhere in Seoul. Now you're talking to her for the first, the very first time. 
that you got something to tell her or do you have anything to say to her? Please. I think I would start with just saying thank you for birthing me. Um, I've had a pretty good life so far. And while I'm sad that a part of me didn't get to have a Korean childhood and didn't get to live in Korea, I am very grateful for the opportunities that I've had. Um, I do wish that I could have connected with birth family sooner um, so that I could have also had them in my life when I had my children first born. Um, but overall, thank you for, for giving birth to me. And I hope that she also has had a good life. Thank you for sharing that, Shasha. Now what's going to happen? What's your plan? Are you coming back to Korea with your children? Um, what are you going to do there? So I am actually coming to Korea in, going to Korea in two weeks. Um, I've gone through a lot of personal things in the last few years. And so I'm also using this as an opportunity to try and find myself a little bit more and connect with my Korean identity mm. as best as I can. Um, but my big hopes and dreams for when I arrive are to eat really good food and to visit where I was born, mm. um, see some museums. <laughs> I'm trying not to have a lot of high expectations because I really just want to experience it in the moment. Okay. Uh, I think I'm excited as you are. <laughs> Thank you for your time, Shasha, and uh, hope for the best and uh, say hello to your beautiful children. And uh, mm -hmm. are you, do you know how to, how to pay bus fare and uh, even subway fare there in Seoul? I need to get a T-Money <laughs> card. <laughs> you are better than I am. All right. Thanks for your time, Shasha. We'll keep in touch and uh, let us know what's up in Seoul pretty soon. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Looking for mom together. 오늘은 Shasha Griffin, 김현지 씨, 오하이오에 살고 있는 Shasha Griffin, 김현지 씨와 대화 나눴습니다. 올해 서른 일곱 살이고요. 많은 입양인들이 어린이 된 뒤에서야 한국의 친부모를 찾아 나서게 됩니다. 다양한 이유가 있을 수 있겠지만 무엇보다 가정을 가꾸고 아이를 갖게 되면서 힘겨웠을 한국의 친부모님들의 사정을 이해하게 되기 때문이라고 늘 합니다. 그리고 시간이 많이 지났지만 저희 Looking for Mom은 이들의 간절한 바람이 꼭 이루어지길 바랍니다. 부모를 찾아 이젠 괜찮다, 힘겨운 결정을 해줘서 감사하다고 말하고 싶어 합니다. 이들의 바람이 이루어지도록 이 영상을 여러분들이 더 많은 분들에게 더 많은 분들이 많은 곳에서 볼수 있도록 퍼뜨려 주십시오. 저희는 다음 영상에서 여러분 다시 만나겠습니다. 최인성이었습니다. 감사합니다.